is a complicated machine, working from conception to death without our conscious help. Over time, stress, environmental factors, and lifestyle can damage the heart. Your heart has two main systems. First, your heart is a pump. It has a network of pipes along with some valves and pumping chambers. Second, your heart is a complicated electrical system. The heart generates its own electrical signal and uses that signal to run the pumps, causing them to contract and relax in a specific timing sequence. Disease abnormalities in the electrical pathways may cause the normal rhythm to be disrupted, either speeding up or slowing down the electrical impulses responsible for each heartbeat. If the heart beats too slowly, it will not pump enough blood to meet the body's demands. If the heart beats too quickly, it will not have enough time between contractions to fill completely and will fail to pump enough blood to the body. This video addresses how pacemakers work to correct the electrical system of the heart and the evolution of both pacemakers and pacing. At the beginning of the 20th century, pacemakers were large, cumbersome external devices that used vacuum tubes and relied on external AC power. They were frequently too traumatic for young patients. A transthoracic pacemaker was a bulky device worn externally that stimulated the heart using electrodes placed on the chest. However, due to the large impulses required to stimulate the heart, use of these early pacemakers caused pain and burns. It was not until 1957 that doctors began implanting the electrodes. This was better, but the patient still had to carry around the bulky pulse generator. Because the skin remained open around the leads, patients were more susceptible to infection. In 1957, Earl E. Bakken developed the first wearable, battery-powered transistorized pacemaker with the electrodes attached directly to the heart. Thanks to computer technology, today's pacemakers are much more flexible and adaptable. For instance, some devices turn on only when your heart rate drops below a certain level. These are called demand pacemakers. Other devices, known as rate adaptive pacemakers, automatically increase your heart rate when you exercise and slow down when you rest, just like a healthy heart does. Bradycardia is defined as a resting heart rate of under 60 beats per minute. It sometimes results in fainting, shortness of breath, and, if severe enough, heart failure. This occurs because someone with bradycardia may not be pumping enough oxygen-rich blood. When the heart paces too slowly, it can prevent a person from leading a full and active life. The first and most important job of a pacemaker was to help your heart beat at a high enough rate to keep you alive. A pacemaker can offer the security of knowing your heart will continue to work, allowing a more active and healthy lifestyle. Here is an example of a healthy heart beating in slow motion. First, the SA node fires, allowing blood to fill the ventricles. Next, the AV node fires, which causes a ventricular contraction, allowing blood to flow out of the heart. You can see the complex dance the heart goes through. This complexity is orchestrated by the specific arrangement of electrical impulses. When a pacemaker lead is placed on the muscle, a poor contraction pattern may develop. You can see how this heart is not following the complex pacing of a healthy heart. In fact, this dual chamber pacing is causing the heart to work harder and less efficiently. Because the electrical impulses do not imitate a healthy heart, they are actually causing stress on the heart muscles. Over time, in certain patients, this can lead to additional problems. When paced with an external device or a pacemaker, the heart is retrained to fire in a different pattern. This is called remodeling. When the pacemaker lead is placed on the heart muscle, inefficient remodeling may occur. This could affect a percentage of pacemaker recipients. Over time, inefficient remodeling can damage the heart. Short-term damage can include valve leaks and fiber strain. Long-term effects can include detrimental changes to the heart itself. During healthy pacing, the cells of the heart communicate instantly and efficiently, like one email going to a thousand people at once. 
Inefficient communication occurs when pacing the muscle directly. You can think of these cells communicating one by one, losing valuable time and information. In 1968, Dr. Benjamin Sherlag discovered that when a specific point on the heart, called the His bundle, was stimulated through the pacemaker lead, the heart began to beat identical to a healthy heart. In the year 2000, Dr. Pramod Deshmukh, an electrophysiologist in Sayre, Pennsylvania, announced that he had successfully performed direct His bundle pacing in his patients. The His bundle has nerve-like fibers that connect with heart muscle cells and activate them in a physiologically coordinated pattern. When a pacemaker lead is placed at the His bundle, the heart begins to contract in a pattern identical to a healthy heart. There is virtually no difference between a healthy heart and a heart that has been paced at the His bundle. Over time, His bundle pacing can actually reverse the damage of inefficient remodeling and return the heart to a normal, healthy contraction. As pacemakers have advanced, so has the evolution of pacing the heart. His bundle pacing intends to promote the healthiest cardiac function. If you are considering a pacemaker, have one that needs attention, or would simply like to know more, please contact your doctor and ask to be evaluated for his bundle pacing. Your heart will thank you.